solid and uh, expressive. I think you've accomplished something you should be very proud of. So really wonderful. Yeah. Um, so I guess we, let's go back to the beginning, because I, I think that the, it's, it's funny, you know, th th I feel like the first page is still sort of the hardest in the whole concerto, you know? There's just so much to manage. And um, um, also, you know, psychologically, it's like, it's the beginning, right? And people have been waiting three and a half minutes to see you enter. So <laughs> if you let them down when you come in, well, yeah, it's going to take a while for you to make up for that, right? Um, yeah, in general, I think that um, uh, your approach to the pieces is, is, is just excellent. I mean, the only thing that I really feel could be more present is a sense that you as a soloist um, are leading the thread of the music. And that takes many different forms. Uh, 
depending on the type of passage that you're playing. And, and you know, that's, I think, why the, also the first page is good to work on, because there's a lot of different types of music. But, you know, for example, sometimes in a, um, in a passage that's more technical, it's just a matter of finding a way to uh, keep, the, keep the phrase moving, not let the articulation make the music feel beady. When it's more lyrical, it's perhaps about the way that you craft the end of a particular note. So anyway, let's, let's, let's go back to the beginning. And um, uh, just one bar is, is, yeah, or two bars. Is, thank you. Good. Great, great. Okay, so just a couple things. First of all, you know, uh, I remember the very first time I heard this piece, I, I was like, oh my gosh, when the cello comes in, it's B major. And I think, you know, we as cellists, we, we, we forget, because it's like, oh yeah, it's the beginning of the Dvorak concerto, right? But we haven't heard this statement yet with the da, dee, dee, da. So I think that when you play this initial, something about the D sharp, both in the intonation, but also in the emphasis, should be very present. Uh, and then also here, don't forget the original presentation. This is a melody. So when you play the, it's easy to kind of just put a, find a way to just thread again. Take command of the pulse there. Let the let the orchestra follow your musical line. One more time. Fantastic. So now um, this bar, that, that's, you know, often people, and then they sort of play it like a second downbeat, right? I think it's important to feel the syncopation, and then feel the duration of that second E. Four. And also remember that this is a, a dynamic up from the beginning, right? So think about the, the relationship between this and, and then, and then finally, this, uh, these chords were great. Just remember that when you get here, you've gone from uh, to, it's like a, a pop song moment, really, where you're like, oh, you're, you're going up one half step, right? <laughs> so think about how that C major quality, the energy of that moment is so much more, more present than the, perhaps save a little bit at the beginning. You don't want to give too much. Um, last time. Great things, fantastic. Uh, so when you get here, just remember that I think that the there's forzanos on every single beat, and the one that is hardest to bring out is a this one. Especially the second time, if you can, then then you can really you can bring out that rhythmic, the way that it propels you into the third iteration, which then becomes your cadenza. And when you get here. Have you seen the funny masterclass clip with Rostropovich and Xavier Philippe, where, where he's like he's playing that note and then Rostropovich moves his head, you know, <laughs> because like that's your moment to like show show off like how artistic you are, right? But what I wanted to comment about the way you're playing this is that uh, you start out great, but then your note starts to lose life. It's like even though it changes, it needs to still be alive. 
about the winds, you know. And even more so here, feel how it connects. I wouldn't give up the emotional quality. You know, this, it's very easy for that to feel like an end, but it's really not an end. It's just a bridge. Right? So maybe just a, from there. Don't give up, save your bow. Right, we'll try one more time. So you don't need to make a, a swell, you just need to really save and maintain the intensity through the end. So. Better. Even more. Connect. Good. Good, yeah, and good. And so now, even when you're playing piano here, Feel the volatility inside, and you can help in the left hand by having this kind of, it's nervous activity. The trill, it's, it's not a complacent trill, it's not just right there. Right, so you need to feel, in, be in chamber music with the, with the, the flute there. Yeah. Uh, just want to... Volatile. Use your whole bow. Yes, nice. You don't have to play loud, just broad. Beautiful. Fantastic things. Okay, just a couple small details. One, uh, I love the fact that you give the forte piano on both the first and third beats, because a lot of people, uh, they kind of, the, the, uh, the only thing is that the stroke that you're finding, it's a little small for a concerto. I think you need to find in the uh, kind of, instead of more like, I would probably use a little bit more over your whole arm. And remember that the, the piano is, Especially for a, a big orchestra like this, piano is a, a, it's a, it's a feeling, it's not a dynamic. Pretty much everything has to be like mezzo forte and up, right? But your pianissimo can have like an intensely, your pianos and pianissimos have an intensely mysterious feel or very internal, but they're still very present. Um, and then when you get here, uh, more, I think a little more dynamic detail would be great. Because you have the big crescendo then, you know, a couple months ago, I was so fed up with, the, with how bad this sounded, I decided to change the Boeing. And it still sounds bad, but at least I feel more comfortable. <laughs> so, so I could finally lead in the frog to, to that, to that, because remember, the hairpin goes to the middle, right? Um, but anyway, it can be done at the frog. Almost every cellist has done it at the frog. Um, try just um, maybe... Uh, One small detail, this is great. The only thing is that the rhythm there is really interesting. You have, and then you have that rest, right? And I think what happens is if you play with too much emphasis, then you lose the sense of the rest. If you play more legato, then it's actually really singing. Da -da 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 -dee -da -dee 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 -dee. It creates a lot of internal energy. Yeah, anyway, you don't have to do it again. Uh, maybe, maybe from here. I'm so sorry, I'm just telling you to start places. I, I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for, for falling so well. Um, 
Yeah, great. So uh, um, the only thing is that you know this moment is kind of it's the culmination of the of the first page, right? Um, and when you get here, it's the first time that you're alone. It's your solitary voice, right? Uh, you can't give up too soon. Yeah. So when you play here, this is still fortissimo. Only now they're a bit of a diminuendo, right? Starting here, so you can feel that D maybe has a slightly different character. But I actually like I like to change bow, so I don't feel and to play really legatissimo there, just really sing. Don't don't be afraid of uh, of missing. Yeah. Yeah. Give more on the D dot E. Sing. Yeah, good. Move through it, dude. Now. Nice. Very good. Now this is pianissimo, right? So good. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. This up. Yeah. You know, a, a lot of people they play it uh, kind of like more like mezzo forte, like uh, kind of. But actually, in the in the in both the first edition and the original, it's super soft and only a little bit of. It's like a Holy Spirit that's suddenly wa wafting into the room, and then and then of course you you play the main second theme. Uh, yeah, just try maybe one more time. Uh, uh, if, from there. Yeah. Now change everything. Nice. Don't get slow. Keep moving. Excellent, great. So of course this is this this theme is it's really hard because it's simultaneously deeply expressive and incredibly personal, but it also has to be very simple, right? Because it's, it has the feeling of being a, just something that you could hum while you're walking, you know, in, in, in the farm or whatever, right? Um, what I would recommend is that while you play it, you listen exclusively to the cellos and basses. Listen to the bass line. Because actually the bass line will tell you everything you need to know about what rubato you can and can't take, and also what uh, what uh, dynamic scheme you should take. So like, for example, you know, da -dee, da -da -da -dee, da -da, this is simple. Da -dee, da -dee, da -da. Sorry, by singing. Now you can take time because the phrase starts again, but da -dee, da -dee. I would not diminuendo here because it changes, right? So when you play, here. Give it your all. Now be in contact with the conductor, going into the next, yeah. So up until that end of the phrase, you should feel propelled by what's happening in the bass line. The bass line is the, 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 the core of the music, the simplicity, you can find it. So try, try one more time, just one bar before. Give it your all. Just a couple small details. So when you get here, right, the entire harmonic area is one of incredible 
promise, right? Nothing fulfilled about it. So when your sound suggests constantly of what's to come, and what I would keep in mind is here, don't let that die. It's very easy to kind of think, and the phrase, but it, don't let the cello take over. And also here, uh, the hairpin actually goes to the B. It goes there both times, amazingly. The only difference is that here you can think that the crescendo goes on, which you did great. But I would just think a lot about that B and this B. The relationship is very lyrical there. Phrase to the middle of the bar. Uh, just pick up the... Also, be, be open. I mean, the, the, this, this is kind of prayerful, you know? So if, if, if imagine that you're, you're, you're in dialogue with something divine, you know, not just your own body. Sing to me. Nice. Raise here. Don't get stuck in the bow. You Good. Don't be tight. Yeah. Good. Good. Sorry, very good. Uh, here, don't be too soft because you need the orchestra to follow you. It's a, it's a very difficult transition. Uh, I would still, you know, when in general, when you have this, like a huge climax, climax like this, uh, you have to make sure that the energy that you've created dissipates over a period of time. Um, because if it dissipates suddenly, it doesn't make sense to us emotionally. You know, we're emotional beings. When we have a, a very strong feeling, it doesn't just go away instantly, right? Even if we get some amazing news that changes the way we feel, we still probably have that negativity or whatever, that positivity within us, right? So allow that to, to dissipate through those few bars. And when you get here, remember that ultimately this is a lyrical passage. You know, this, this is just, you know, cellistic concerto stuff. Like, words are like, okay, yeah, it's a concerto, let's give them something hard to play. But originally, it was a... And, the, and you have to play along with the clarinets. They're singing very, very lyrically. So uh, won't, uh, just start with a little, a lot of energy still, and dissipate it gradually over that bar. Don't be too soft. Sing. Crescendo here, forte. Make so much of a ritardando there, it's going to be difficult for the orchestra to follow you. So you, uh, three, if you, if you don't, if you don't want a crescendo, you don't have to. It's, it's crescendo. Crescendo is not written, but a lot of cellists have done it. Uh, three, four, and I, I would suggest giving a little bit before the beat. So you, the, the general issue is that that the winds are. Um, well, actually, there are all sorts of issues that can happen. <laughs> they can either be ahead or, or behind. But it helps if it's very clear, especially with the second, third, and fourth of the chords that you try to do them all without the, That confuses them rhythmically. Uh, so just maybe, this is beautiful, by the way. Excellent facility. And, and I love the way that you're flowing through that. Uh, for you. From there. It doesn't make so much sense to because this is the third beat right? so, the, 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 the function of that phrase uh, in the in the context of the pulse is one of leading right so I would crescendo all the way through uh, just right there sorry we're almost out of time for this right? oh you can play okay Good. Don't be too slow. 
loud. It's fortissimo here. is that when you practice all this stuff, all this stuff, what I would practice is using more bow than you want. Because when you play this, ultimately, you have to, you have to be kind of on a fine line between being in control and not being in control. Because the problem is if you're constantly in control, then there are no stakes for the audience, right? Um, and if you're constantly out of control, you won't be able to play the piece. <laughs> But it's like, you have to kind of make them wonder a little bit whether you're going to get it. Um, and if you know you're going to get it because you're really using very little bow, you're not risking anything. If you... Go a little crazy. It's kind of like, it's like watching the Olympics a little bit. Like, if everyone was going to get a perfect score, there was no, there'd be no need to turn the TV on, right? You want to see people kind of, you know, <laughs> not quite make it, right? Um, so, yeah, but excellent, really excellent uh, performance and fantastic both of you guys. Yeah.